Welcome to Meet Your Oscar winners. I'm Carolyn Jardina, and I'm here with three winners from this weekend. Uh, at the far end, we have Gary Rizzo, who was the re-recording mixer on Dunkirk, and he received a sound mixing Academy Award with Mark Wangen, who's sitting next to him, who was the production sound mixer. And uh, not joining us today was, um, was Greg Landacre. The mighty. The mighty <laughs> Greg Landacre. And then in the sound editing category, uh, the winners were um, supervising music editor Alex Gibson and seated next to me, Richard King, who was the supervising sound editor and sound designer. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So first, tell us about the experience. So uh, you were in the audience, your names were called. What happened from there? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. It's all a blur. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just remember walking and... <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, hoping I wasn't going to trip, and uh, <laughs> um, I wanted to thank so many people, but, you know, it, you see the clock turning, and my partner, Alex, wanted to say something, too, so, sure. um, you know, I just I just tried to be, you know, as, as terrified as I was looking out at the sea of actors right in front of me, um, uh, tried to, uh, you know, express what I felt at that moment. Well, it, uh, you can thank some of the other people here now if you'd like. Golly. Well, my, my amazing crew who, who all contributed so much to the film and who uh, we all just worked uh, tirelessly. It was such a fun experience, the, the entire thing, so engrossing. And we all got into the history of the time and the, the aircraft. And um, it was just a, uh, it, it was like a, it was like a, a toy shop. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah. We had all kinds of props and things that we had bought from, you know, collectors and things to record, old bells and sirens and, and you even guns and built some. To yeah, we it. we built some stuff and uh, it was a, it was a uh, uh, hands-on experience. Everybody really put their backs into it. Um, and actually, we just figured this out that you actually, we believe, broke a record last night. This was your fourth Academy Award in sound editing. That's what I'm told, yeah. I, I find it hard to believe, yeah. but uh, awesome. I guess somehow, I don't know how that happened, but it seems to be so. <laughs> <laughs> And, your, you know, your category last night was also notable because um, Alex Gibson, again, was the supervising music editor. Correct. Which is very unusual. Could you explain that? Well, uh, uh, the, the way the the way the music and the sound came together was so uh, in tandem with each other. Uh, they used some sound effects in the music, rhythmically as rhythmic elements, um, and the music was built up from a lot of component parts that Chris and Alex put together with, you know, with Hans's input, and um, uh, so it it really felt like he and I were. We're, uh, uh, we're doing the same thing with different materials. You know, I was, I was creating the, the soundscape of the, of, for the, the, char the characters in the film would have heard, right? And, and, and uh, Alex was creating the soundscape that sort of the audience's emotional uh, rhythm, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, but the way we were working uh, just made it seem like this time it was appropriate to, to do that, to include him in the um, category. You actually had to um, ask for special Yeah, yeah, I, I, ha I went to uh, the, uh, uh, the sound branch governors and we um, and pitched the idea to them. Mm -hmm. and we, they discussed it. It just was setting a precedent, but they, uh, they saw the logic of my argument and we did the same thing with the BAFTAs and um, they also okay. accepted that logic. So I'm happy that that worked out. So, Mark, you were, now we're switching over to mixing. Okay. Uh, you were the production sound mixer. I was. So you were on the, on the ground. I was there. You were on I the was, boat. <laughs> yeah, I was on the beach. I was on the mole. I was in the boats. I was un under, in the bottom of the boat in the Moonstone for days and days. And, yeah, and I think, uh, and I also recorded a lot of uh, the actual sounds of the boats, the motors, the water. I tried to, you know, to give these guys a little leg up in sound editing to have at least the original boats, whether they want to replace them or not. But um, yeah, I mean, it was it was a very tough shoot, like very physically difficult, dragging all the stuff across the beaches, dragging it to the end of the mole, 
getting on and climbing up the side of battleships carrying stuff. And um, But, you know, I, I'm really pleased with how it came out, and I really want to thank uh, my crew, actually, which I didn't get an opportunity to do because it's too many people, but Huck, who's my main boom operator, and Dominic, who's my boom operator in the Netherlands, and um, Tim, who helped us out in England, and Larry in... Uh, in the, we shot some in the United States, and then we had uh, our thirds were Gautier, and um, we had, oh, Zach. Wow, we had a lot of people, <laughs> you know, actually, because we were in so many countries, so many places. Sure. And, uh, but, um, you know, it came out really well. And I actually think, you know, also on a, on a larger scale, it was such a collaborative effort in terms of the entire crew. I mean, everybody helped us out, the grips, the prop people, the... I mean, it was across the board. We basically, especially on the ships, we kind of had to to survive, essentially. You know, we all had to help each other get through by passing equipment over and keeping people from falling off. And I mean, it was, you know, so it really was, it really brought us very close together and made for a really fun experience within the crew. Now, all of you have worked with Chris Nolan before, uh, yes. um, but this was your first this Academy Award. Uh, Gary, this was your second. Second, yeah. And for Greg, it was his fourth. His fourth, <laughs> yeah. I think that's a, a tying of the record for Greg with four. I don't think there's anybody, any other re recording mixer that has more than four. So yeah. nice cool. to see him mm -hmm. finish out his career. Yeah. And he's hitting that mark. I mean, he's, he's an amazing guy. No, Greg has said he's, uh, to use his words, putting a period on his career for now. <laughs> yeah, I'll call it an exclamation <laughs> point. I wouldn't call it a period. Do you, do you think Chris will uh, will urge him back for one more? I'll bet he'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would try, but you never know how these things go. You know, he's an amazing guy, and he brings a, such a special energy to the mix, to the stage. When he walks in, he's got a big smile on his face. And says, good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? You know, and he, like, starts that tone. It's magic. For me, I got to say, Greg is not only a legend in our business, not only an icon, but he is a, a dear friend and a life coach in, inside of work and outside of work. He is a very, very special guy to me, and I will never, never take him for granted. I am very gracious to have him in my life. Great. So tell us a little bit about uh, some of the challenges from the recording next to um, uh, Well, every day is a unique challenge on every show. It doesn't really matter what show you're on, but I gotta say, for Dunkirk, the um, I have a little analogy I like to use. Um, sound editing is like bringing the blood to the body, and mixing is a bit of the blood pressure. Like we're controlling the blood pressure of that. We're moving that blood through the system exactly as our director wants that to go. Hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys would think that's I accurate like that. or not, but like it's a, I've never thought you know, of it that it's, way, um, it's <laughs> uh, And in this mix, uniquely, we have uh, a mix, I think, that takes full control of the audience's cardiovascular system. They are really, like, through the music and through the effects and, and the combination of them, as well as the dialogue, everything has its place. Everything has its proper energy. And it's all timed just right with the right dynamic to really work the audience exactly as Chris wants it to work. So tell us about working with Chris. Again, you've all worked with him before. What is that experience like? I find it to be magical because at 9 o'clock in the morning, he walks in that back door. You can hear, you can almost set your watch by it. 9 o'clock, click, click. <laughs> you can hear him. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Here we are. We're all in our positions. We're all ready to go. We have our tools. We have our arsenal. We're ready to go. And... It's creative time from the minute that we start. And then 1 o'clock comes around. All right, it's 1 o'clock. It's lunch, everybody. See you, <laughs> see you all at 2. And that's great. We get a healthy break. And then we work through the afternoon, and it's great. And he's a family guy. He likes to work regular hours. We don't do crazy overtime. Richard, would you agree Yeah, correct. Yeah, we don't do crazy overtime. Um, you know, he's about getting it right to his expectation the first time. And then we move on, and we, we, we conquer the next goal. I mean, it's kind of similar in production in that he doesn't do a lot of takes. You know, he does try to get it right, like, the first time or second or third time. It's rare that you go, like, more than five or six takes, and that as, I, as I recall. What did you all talk about last night after you won? Hmm. What did he tell you? Oh, what, what did Chris say? <laughs> said we did a great job, you know. It's just like, you did a really great job, and, you know, you deserve this, basically. 
That's what he said to me. He was filled with good energy when yeah. I saw him. Yeah, he was very happy. He was very, very, he was very happy. happy. He, he was. really was. He was very yeah. happy. And then, of course, the film editor, Lee Smith, also won last oh, night. so great. Yeah, third time's charm. We yeah. love him. Yeah. Yeah. He's also been working part of the, <laughs> yeah. Chris's team for a long time. Um, did you get to talk to him last night? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's a magical guy because he comes from a sound background. You know, and and so he knows all about timing, and he knows about energy, and he knows about how an audience is affected, and and he's right there with us. And so when he can interact, he can kind of play the that middle role actually between the sound crew and Chris, and he can kind of, I, don't know, I wouldn't say translate because we are we're all speaking a common language, but it's a it's a good it's a good extra person to have in that equation. I find Lee to be spectacular. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he's great an old guy. friend, dear friend. Now you two. You go back. Didn't you work on Master and Commander together? I did. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I've known me for a long time. That was your first. Academy my first Oscar. Work. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, what's next for each of you? I'm working on X Men Dark Phoenix right now. Hmm? With Lee. With Lee. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> and and uh, Alex, <laughs> my uh, oh, Alex okay. partner. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, I'm working on a TV series called Homecoming, a Julia Roberts show for Amazon. That's uh, that seems promising. We just started shooting this week. I would love to tell you, but I'm going to pass on that answer. <laughs> that's okay. It's All right. <laughs> Star Wars. Sorry. No, it's not Star Wars. But that's okay. I wish it were Star Wars. <laughs> Kathy, call me. <laughs> so t let's talk a little bit more about the Oscars. Did you meet anyone last night for the first time that you've been looking forward to meeting for a while or that surprised you? Hmm. I saw Mahershala Ali, who I first met on Benjamin Button and then on House of Cards and has become like this enormous actor and it was just so fun to see him and to see each other because you know we've known each other so long and his career path has just been fantastic you know and mine's been okay too so it was just really great but um, as far as anybody new I don't remember I got one. I said, yeah, you know yeah, one? Alexander Spla. oh my gosh I mean I love I've always loved his work and we actually met at the Baptist briefly just in passing and then we met backstage again last night and I've only mixed one of his scores in another film but oh. we had a wonderful moment backstage where we identified that we hardly know each other but there's this uh -huh. little bit of magical nice. connection backstage <laughs> I mean that happens, you know? <laughs> it was it was a really nice moment. And do we have a fan who wants to say hello? Oh, Luciana, you want to come up and say hi? Yeah. This is my <laughs> this is my daughter. She is magnificent. She is my everything. She is my energy and she just keeps me going. <laughs> and I'm I had the best date ever last night. She was right there with me. And I actually watched her react when they called Dunkirk. I couldn't even look at the stage. I just figured I'm gonna just watch her. <laughs> And she didn't get it until I think they actually said my name, and then I saw her jump. <laughs> she literally jumped out of her seat. It was so wonderful, and I hugged her so tight. I'm so, so thankful nice. you were there last night. So Thank you. Sweet. I love you. Do you want to say something? Was that your first Oscars? Yes. All right. What did you think? I thought it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hold it. You can hold it. She likes to hold it. Of there course. you go. <laughs> okay, well, I, I think we're going to wrap up, but I'm um, so glad you were able to come down to our studio and say hello. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Okay.